So over the past few months, one of the most common questions I get asked on this channel is what are the features that one needs to look for when buying a microscope? But these days we have so many microscopes with so many features that it's almost impossible to make a detailed list because the models keep changing. But if I were to summarize the five most important things that you need to look for when you buy a microscope, it would be these five things. Let's start with the first one. The most important thing that you need to look for when you purchase a microscope to be used in a dental clinic is the range of magnification. A microscopes can have many different steps of magnification. The basic ones are usually three-step magnification, which means that every time you turn this button that you see here, which is the magnification changer button or the magnification factor button, you have only three options in a three-step microscope. That's a very basic microscope and usually not recommended. Most people use that for lab work. The very basic that you need for routine dental work is a five-step microscope, which means that every time you move the magnification changer button, you can move up to five different magnification ranges starting from the lowest to the highest but the more this ranges or the more the steps you have the better the microscope is so you have three steps you have five steps you have six steps and some microscopes even have eight or ten steps and there are some microscopes the more advanced ones which don't have a step they have a continuous zoom like the one you see here this doesn't have any steps you can actually zoom in and out these are even better if you have that option because the more range you have the better it is when we say range it's not just about every step that you can go up or down it's also about how low you can see so what makes a great microscope is not how big you can see it's actually how small you can see this might sound like a paradox and why do we say that because in dentistry, unlike other fields like neurosurgery or ophthalmology, we don't just rely on high mag alone. We have to constantly switch between high mag and low mag. So a microscope which doesn't have a very low mag makes it impossible to work continuously through a microscope. So if you look at the online course or even most of the videos that we post here, one of the philosophies that we suggest is to take a dentist from being an absolute beginner in a microscope and take you through a stage eventually when you can continuously work with a microscope. Because a lot of people just use a microscope intermittently. They don't work continuously. And if you want to work continuously without looking in and out of the microscope, your microscope microscope should have a very low mag as well as a high mag. So you should have the flexibility to switch from a low mag to a high mag. Only then can you work continuously. For example, you're giving anesthesia under a scope or you're trying to place a rubber dam under a scope. Then you need a low mag. You can't do these things under a high mag. And then if you want to switch to, let's say you're removing caries under the microscope, then you need a higher mag. So let's say you're doing a composite restoration, you want to remove caries, you do the caries removal under high mag, and then you're placing a composite and then you want to see how that tooth looks in relation to the adjacent teeth. For that, you need to switch back to a lower mag. That's where the field increases, right? So you need to have that flexibility and that flexibility depends on the range of mag you have and how low you can see at the lowest mag. So that's why that is the first factor that I look for when I buy a microscope. How much is the range? of magnification that you have and what is the lowest magnification that you can go to. This is one of the key factors and typically when you pay more you get a much wider range in your surgical microscope. So a three-step microscope obviously will be cheaper than let's say a six-step microscope but you will not be able to work continuously with a three-step microscope and our goal is to work ergonomically continuously with a surgical microscope and for that you need a wide range of magnifications. So this is the first thing that I look for when I buy a surgical microscope. The second thing which I feel is an absolute necessity is something called an extender. So what is an extender? An extender is a device which moves your eyepieces or your inclinable binoculars more towards you when you work. Now when you don't have an extender the eyepieces or the inclinable binoculars are attached to the body of the microscope vertically, which means they go on attach itself from top. What the extender does is it creates an angle between the inclinable binoculars and the objective, thereby enabling it to be attached from the front of the microscope rather than the top. As a result, these inclinable binoculars 
move more towards the operator and when this happens the operator doesn't have to arch forwards to reach the inclinable binoculars they can sit upright so for me this is a really really important tool to have in a microscope because you don't want to keep arching forwards and then put a lot of stress on your shoulders and your back so the second feature that i look for when i buy a microscope is an extender so that i can sit upright and work ergonomically the third feature that I look for is something called a variable focal length objective. Now, microscopes can have two kinds of objectives. One is called a fixed objective, where the distance between the objective and the object in focus is fixed. For example, you can have a 250mm objective, which means the object that you're focusing on gets focused at a distance of 250mm from the objective lens. Or you could have a 300mm objective where the object that you're trying to focus gets focused at a distance of 300mm from the objective. This is known as a fixed objective. The problem with having a fixed objective is that the working distance is more or less fixed and you don't have a lot of options to move from different ranges or you you can't keep shifting the area of focus without moving the patient or the microscope. With a variable focal length objective, it's not a fixed working distance. We don't say 250 mm variable focal length objective or 300 mm variable focal length objective. Instead, we are given a range. You have a range. For example, you could have a variable focal length objective where the objective moves from 200 to 300 mm or you could have 250 to 300 mm or you could have 300 to 400 mm or you can have an even more expensive one where the range is even more for example 200 to 400 mm which means you get a huge range where which the objective can move through a plane now what does this mean and why is this important in everyday dentistry it's important in everyday dentistry because you aren't just doing one kind of procedure where you need one form of magnification. You are always dynamic when you work in everyday clinical practice. Let's say you are preparing a class 2 cavity which also has an occlusal class 1 extension. Now to remove a caries on the occlusal surface, you need to focus on the occlusal surface. Once you are done with the occlusal surface, let's assume that you want to remove the caries from the proximal area. When you do this, you have to focus on an area which is 10 to 12 millimeters away from the occlusal surface. Now, if you want to move to an area which is different or 10 to 12 millimeters away from where you were before, then with a fixed objective, you would have to move the microscope or the patient. With a variable focal length objective, you can do this by just moving a button which moves the objective through a plane. So that's the huge advantage that a variable focal length objective gives you in everyday clinical practice. You don't have to keep moving the patient or the microscope microscope, you can do this by just moving the objective lens within the microscope itself. So for me, this is probably one of the most important things that a dentist needs to have when they buy a microscope. So feature number three that I look for when I buy a microscope is a variable focal length objective. And the more the wider the range, the better it is when you look for a variable focal length objective. So again, like we mentioned about the range of magnification, variable focal length objectives cost more when the range is more. For example, a 300 to 400 mm variable focal length objective is cheaper than a 200 to 400 mm variable focal length objective. And the more you can afford, the better it is for your clinical work because the more range it gives you in everyday clinical practice. So that's feature number three that I look for when I buy a microscope. The fourth feature that I look for when I buy a microscope is an external camera adapter along with a dedicated focus control button for that camera adapter into which I can attach an external camera. Now, a lot of microscope manufacturers, they offer integrated cameras, which means you buy a microscope and you have a camera for documentation within the microscope itself. Now, I'm not a big fan of integrated cameras because once you buy an integrated camera, then you're pretty much stuck with it for the rest of your life. And there is very little flexibility because you can't keep changing cameras as technology improves. Now, the advantage of having adapters with external camera is that you can keep changing the camera. So when you get a better camera with better features or if something goes wrong with the camera, you can just change the camera and just buy a new camera. So it's a lot lighter on the pocket and you can move with emerging technology. As technology improves, you can keep changing your camera, something which isn't possible when you have an integrated camera. So that is the reason I prefer having an external adapter into which you can attach the camera of your choice for documentation. And I keep telling you one 
one of the biggest advantages of buying a microscope is that it helps you document. And we've covered this a lot in several videos on this channel as well as in our online course. We place a lot of importance for documentation in everyday clinical practice. And one of the problems we have when we attach an external camera is that it's not necessarily that the camera lens should have the same focus as your eyes. So you might be seeing an area in focus with your eyes, but when you try to focus with the camera, the camera might not have the same focus. So there might be some variations. If you want to fine tune the focus, then modern day adapters have a dedicated focus button, which helps you control the focus of the camera. So you can look through the camera, make sure an object is in focus. And when you check the camera and you figure out the camera is not in focus or the camera isn't seeing what you're seeing, then you don't have to change the, the position of the microscope or the patient. You can adjust the focus of the camera independent of what you are seeing. So that's why a dedicated focus button for that camera adapter is another important feature that I look for when I buy the microscope. So that's feature number four, an external camera adapter and a dedicated focus controller for that adapter so that I can adjust the focus of that camera independently. The fifth feature that I look for when I buy a microscope is something called a light filter. In dentistry, we work with materials which have a photo initiator which gets triggered when exposed to the blue light component of the visible light spectrum. And these days, most microscopes have extremely powerful visible light. The minute you expose a light cured material to the intense light that comes out from the microscope, the material will set in a few seconds. So you just can't work with composite materials or any material which has a photo initiator through a microscope. So to compensate for that, a good microscope should have an integrated filter which you can use, which will remove the blue light component of the light that passes through the microscope. So you should be able to apply this filter whenever you work with light cured materials so that you get enough working time by using this filter. And once you've done your manipulation and you're ready to cure the light, you can always go back to the regular light. So that is a good feature to have, or I would say an essential feature to have in a microscope, the ability to block out the blue light component and just use the yellow light so that you get enough working time. And once you've done what you wanted to do, we can always switch back the filter and go back to a regular light. So this is the fifth feature that I would look for when I buy a microscope. Of course, there are so many other helpful features that we could look for. And typically, the more you spend, the more features you get in a microscope. But if you are on a tight budget and you want to narrow down the options that you have, then look for a microscope that you can afford with these five essential features. I hope this video kind of clarifies this burning question as to what are the most important features that you need to look for when you buy a surgical microscope. If what we spoke now kind of triggered your interest and you'd like to dive deep into what microscope dentistry is all about, then make sure you check out my online course. I've designed it specifically in a way that virtually any practicing dentist can have a look, implement what we suggest in that course, and in the shortest possible amount of time, you can become extremely proficient in using the surgical microscope in everyday clinical practice. So do check out our online course. I've put the links in the description below. If you'd like more information like this delivered into your inbox every week, not just dental, but lots of other stuff as well, then make sure you subscribe to our weekly newsletter. It's called Wisdom Wednesdays. I've put the link in the description below for that as well. And maybe if what we spoke now triggered your interest and you'd like to see more videos like this, then maybe you should check out some of my other videos that appear on this channel that you see over here. I'll see you next week with another video. Till then, take care. Thanks for watching.